Welcome to the Phil Taylor Jones Show. I'm your host, Phil Taylor Jones, and here we go. We're going to be talking about that ever repressive, ever disgusting, ever bungling idiot we know as President O Bastard. If you've been following the news, say for the last couple of weeks, uh, John Scary has been over in Iran trying to broker a deal between the two countries and uh, the buildup of armament, uh, nuclear, uh, whatever, to make bombs and other weapons of mass destruction. Well, they finally brokered it. And it goes along with what I've been saying all along about O Bastard. Now, we know that his time is dwindling. He doesn't have that much time left. But systematically, everything this bastard has done, say, in the past couple of months, has been something to just totally tear down what's left of what he hasn't already torn down in this country. Uh, this deal that he just put forth uh, is, is bad. Iran is getting a gold mine and we're getting a shaft. They're getting everything they want their way and we're not getting too much in the, in the deal. And again, is it good for America? No. Now, that's already on the table and it's stinking. Now let's put another plate of crap on the table, courtesy oh bastard. Tomorrow he's going to be, as they say, the first sitting president to visit a penitentiary. Ugh. Here's what the bastard's proposing. Now, uh, a couple of days ago, he already pardoned, I think, about 40 supposedly non-violent criminals, um, you know, giving them freedom. Now, they could be ranging from drug pushers uh, to it's some other heinous crime, attempted murder, what have you. Now, to add insult to injury, I was looking at a program they call Democracy Now! And they had on uh, a couple of, well, they had on, um, I think it was two sets of people. One that was representing the Koch brothers, David and Charles, and then another that was an ex-murderer that is now free. And some other fella that uh, has a coalition, I think it's Slash 50 or something, that helps to try to get these prisoners out. Now, what, what they were saying was just mind-boggling to me. And you know I've already, if you follow me on, on Google+, Plus, you've seen some of my posts about, you know, the way I feel about things. One of them was... Um, doing wrong the new right and it, it just further goes on to show that this is something that is now the norm uh what this one of these guys was uh, uh alluding to is that we're so horrible with our criminals these days and we need to rehabilitate them get them back into the mainstream reinstore uh, or reinstate excuse me, all of their human privileges, like getting jobs, getting apartments, uh, just, you know, unblacklisting them in, of sorts. Uh, and how did our prison reform or prison system needs reform? Now, to some minor degree, I would agree with that. Uh, this solitary confinement thing has gone over the top. Uh, they put people in solitary confinement for as much as 40 years. That, that, that's, that's way over the top. So yes, while it is true that uh, we need to reform our penal system you know, in some ways, I can agree with that. But to the releasing of prisoners so that they can gain, uh, regain their life in the mainstream, I, I'm totally against that. We're talking about murderers. We're talking about rapists. We're talking about child molesters. We're talking about people who are serial killers. Now, to what magnitude of prisoner they want to release, they never articulated that. So that leads me to believe, based upon what has been going on in this country for a few years, that they're subject to let anybody out. Now, if the person maybe is a white collar criminal, has stolen some money from the firm or some tools, or if you cheated on your taxes, or if you, um, you know, uh, embezzled, 
yeah, I can see letting prisoners out like that because they're not killing anyone. But if you've committed murder, oh, well, this person committed murder at a young age. Don't care. You committed murder. You've taken away something that you can't give back. Not only did you murder that person, but you kind of killed their family and their friends because every day that that person is gone is a day that that family and those friends die a little more. So no, uh-uh. If you've committed a crime, you stay in there and you pay for it until you die, whether it's of natural causes or they slap your ass on the electric chair, which they don't really use anymore in the gas chamber or a lethal injection, but you stay in there and you pay for your crime. And don't give me all this socioeconomic crapola. There's lots of poor people out there who are scuffling every day, but they don't turn around and then kill somebody or go in and, and, and stick up a bank with a, with a gun or you know pistol whip some uh, merchant, uh, like a liquor store or a convenience store uh, owner and take what they want. They suffer through it, they pull themselves up by their bootstraps and they go on legally and morally. I don't understand the moral fiber of this country and how it has slipped to the bowels of hell that criminals are to be rewarded. Where did that come from? Okay, you let a slew of illegal um, people in this country and you want to reward them for it. Speaking of which, let me, let me just set the stage here. Um, old Bastard came on, he was, I guess he was talking about his, his prison reform issue. And he was talking about how 20 years ago, oh, I was in college 20 years ago, and most of you guys when you were born, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, what a disgusting bag of crap he is. Anyway, he was alluding to 20 years ago, there were a record 500,000 prisoners in this country. Five, uh, 500,000. Now, it's over 2.1, 2.2 million. And it's quadrupled. Why did it quadruple? One, you let all of these derelicts in the country that shouldn't be here, they're committing crimes. You don't send them back, you stick them in prison. If you want to even do that. Secondly, with you letting all of these illegal foreigners in here and trying to subsidize and take care of them, you're pulling money away from youth programs, um, uh, rehabilitatory programs for our young people, our young Americans who are suffering because of this. Then you bring in your socioeconomic issue that they have nowhere to go, they have nothing to do, they have very little means, so what's their next best alternative? is to commit crimes and then you put them in prison. But a lot of this is coming from these foreigners that you let in here, these illegal ones. And some of the legal ones that, you know, are kind of working on what's not so full of debt. So it's no small wonder that you have all of these 2.1, 2.2 million people in prison. Then he even made mention about over in the foreign country in China that they're incarcerating much less people than we are. Okay, well, you know, like I said before, China is full of Chinese. Great Britain and the European countries, you know, they've been kind of stupid enough to follow our leader by letting all these foreigners come into their country illegally. So yeah, maybe they don't have as many as we do, but uh, give it time, they will match our numbers because where you get a lot of illegal foreigners coming in that you don't whether, know whether or not they're good, you don't know what you're getting. And so you may get some criminals in here. That's what Trump's talking about. Okay? So, and even if they aren't the hardened criminals that you envision, they're still criminals because they're coming over illegally. So they're just illegal as hell no matter what. But, you know, if they commit heinous crimes, then that's much more to our chagrin. Um, so, yeah, then you got your Clinton people who just wanted to arrest people left and right. You looked at me funny. You're going to prison. You spat on the ground. You're going to prison. You scratched your butt. You're going to prison. You know, you get those kind of people, and it, it, it kind of makes everything clogged up. And that's what has happened. Yeah, some of the people that are in prison really shouldn't be there because they're not hardened criminals. 
like I said, they're they're you know, and not that I'm trying to demean any kind of crime, but if you're going to incarcerate somebody, I'd much rather have a Charlie Manson type criminal in jail than somebody who perhaps cheated on their taxes, if you get what I'm saying. So now, if, if the cheating on your taxes kind of person is, is what you want to try to rehabilitate and let out of prison, okay, I, I could get behind that. But not when you let out hardened criminals like murderers and, and drunk drivers who run over people and kill them. And, you know, while I'm on that subject, how dare they come up and say a hit and a run or a drunk driving accident? It's not an accident if you sit there on your pitiful behind and you chug a lug of beer or liquor or whatever um, uh, libation you choose and it makes you impaired in your judgment or your reaction time and you willfully take keys to your car and you go out there and start them up and proceed down the street and you kill somebody that's an on purpose it's not an accident because if you got an ounce of brains in your head you know that you don't drink and drive same with texting and driving or doing anything while you're trying to drive the car you put the stupid phone away and you drive the car if you're texting or calling someone and you plow into somebody and you kill them, that's not an accident, that's an on purpose. And if you kill somebody and your butt gets thrown in prison, that's where you stay until you die or until they find another means to get rid of you by capital punishment like uh, a lethal injection or something like that. Um, so yeah, Ambassador's going to the prison tomorrow and you know, for what for? I mean, this guy is a real dirtbag. I mean, coming up with all this crap to further destroy America. Folks, we live in a beautiful country. I love America. I really do. I love it because it's beautiful. It has wonderful places to be. It, uh, you know, nowhere in the world can rival this place. It can equal it. We've got islands. We've got beautiful Hawaiian islands. Uh, we've got mountain ranges. We've got it all. We've got snowy slopes. We've got the Grand Canyon. We've got some things here that people don't have in other countries. So America, this rock, is gorgeous. What I don't like about it, in fact, what I hate about it, are these stupid, muckety-muck career politicians practicing their second grader version of politics and screwing this beautiful country up. That's what I hate. And speaking of that, just to add some more crap on the crap Sally, this bastard named, uh, what's his name? O'Malley. O'Malley. Mitch or He's Michael or something like that. Something O'Malley. He just dropped his hat into the ring today. He's going to be like the flip side of Donald Trump. He wants to give these illegal foreigners real carte blanche, which is ridiculous. I mean, like I said, all of them, except for Trump and Dr. Jill Stein, I, I, I wouldn't even spit on the rest of them. What's this bastard's name? Martin. See, my brother's a wealth of information. You know, he, he, he's a director, producer. Um, so, you know. I depend on he's right there in master control. <laughs> the Martin O'Malley. Oh boy. Yeah, he, he wants to, you know, further ease things for these illegal foreigners so that they'll have more of a chance to stab us in the back. I mean, come on. Wrong is the new right in this country, and we better do something about it. Because, I mean, man, we're slipping so far down the hill right into the cesspool of whatever that we may never get ourselves out if we don't wake up and put a stop to this. Letting all the prisoners out to rehabilitate them so that they can have all of the things that us law-abiding citizens have. I mean, what a slap in the face is that when you think of, okay, here we are, we've never committed a crime. We, we're playing by the rules. And... You know, just because we need to reform the prison, the, 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 the you know, incarceration and the penal uh, system, uh, <clears throat> correctional uh, system in this country, we let the prisoners out. We need to make it fair for them. We got to make it fair and just for them and their families. Now, can you imagine some heinous bastard 
that has gone, gone around killing children, raping and, and killing innocent children, like little Amber. That's why we have this Amber Alert right now. Killing children like that, heinously doing so, and not even taking the time to bury them, just throw them off the side of a, of a highway like so much garbage. And then they put the bastard in jail. And then in, say, 10 years, oh, well, he's paid his debt to society. I'm sure he won't go around killing little girls anymore. So we'll let him out. Oh, they're just playing the, the, the violin and hearts and flowers for these murderous bastards. It, it, it's just, it, it, it's nuts, folks. So we got to keep an eye on this. And like I said, to the extent possible, try to choose the best person we can to go in there and try to make a, make a difference, make a statement which is gonna be hard to do because if you can envision this, you got a person going in there in a white suit in a tomato sauce factory. Whether or not in four or eight years he comes back out with that suit unstained, we don't know. That's why it lends rise to what I said in the previous show. I'd like to see it where they elect everybody new. New Congress, new Senate, new Supreme Court, new president, new vice president, Whatever, dog catcher, you know, reelect or put a new one in there. Get some fresh meat in there. Get some fresh thoughts in there. Get some fresh ideas and get rid of all these old muckety mucks. And maybe we might get somewhere, but obviously that's not going to happen. So whoever we send there, we need to, you know, really look at this person with great scrutiny and figure out is he or she the right person for the job? Can they get the job done? So many of us were fooled seven and a half years ago when this muckety muck came along and thought maybe he'll do a good job. I mean, to tell you how people's minds are today, even today, seven and a half years where we are now, somebody said something to the uh, effect <laughs> that uh, Obama should go and do something to himself. I won't. You know what I mean. And so some people actually, you know, uh, answered that post. And I answered it myself. And uh, then there's this one guy. He comes on. He, he was a black guy. He comes on. Well, what did this president uh, do to you to make you feel that way that George Bush didn't do? And give me a good answer. Because if you can't give me a good answer, I'm going to think that you said what you said about him because he's black. Okay, if you want to be that stupid, cool. First of all, the guy isn't black. He appears to be black. He's a half breed. He's half supposedly white and half supposedly black and muzzy. So maybe he's a three-way split, but he's not black. How many black people do you know, at least American black people, do you know with the name <coughs> Barack Hussein? Hussein? Which let's stay in that muzzy part. Saddam. Obama. Okay. Rhymes with Osama. Yeah. I mean, you can exactly tell that he didn't come from Alabama. So, I mean, I, you know, it, it, it's even question why the bastard got to be president in the first place. But anyway, if he was like, uh, say, Jesse Jackson or, or Samuel L. Jackson, for that matter, tired of these MF and presidents in an MF and country. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I could see something like that, but yeah, I mean, I don't care if the president is plaid with green polka dots with yellow outlines, just so long as he or she gets in there and does what they're supposed to do, which makes things right by the people. Take this Scott Walker guy. They're saying that he's going to get in there because, or he could want him in there because he caters to a certain uh, congressional lobby, or he, you know, they want him in there because he is practically a union buster is what he is. I, and I was listening to this, I said, well, where does the part come in where he's wanted in office because he's gonna uh, try to meet the needs of the American people? 
lobbyists be damned. Unions be damned. I'm talking about John Q. Public. Well, you know, that's what you're supposed to be in there for. So, you know, this is a farce. It, it's a game to them. It, it's, it's, it's a prestige grabber. It's a, okay, if you get me in there, I'll pay you back when I get in kind of thing. And, and that's why it's so out of control now. You know, wrong is the new right. They seem to be uh, wanting to do errors. At least he seems to want to be doing everything, old bastard, to destroy what is left of this poor country after he wrecked it the past seven and a half. After it's been wrecked by all of his predecessors. This guy has enough to say, oh, well, you sure are putting down the Democrats. I said, are you saying that to me personally? Because anybody who knows me knows I don't care about Democrats. But on the same side of that ticket, I don't care about Republicans either. All of them are a bag of crap. And if you turn that bag of crap upside down, I don't know which one would fall out first because they're all a bunch of self-serving, money-grubbing, prestige-grabbing ingrates. Ingrates. This Bernie Sanders going around trying to slam Trump. You ain't gonna slam anybody. Well, what have you done? You've been a, one of those career muckety muck politicians, Mr. Bernie Sanders. What the hell have you done? <coughs> well, 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 what are your achievements? <coughs> and we won't even talk about these other muckety mucks. That stupid Jeb Bush. <coughs> what a bag of crap he is. Like I said, Biggest scandal in his pocket is his being accused of cheating for his, his, his pitiful brother. When he was running for president, holding up the votes for three months while they recounted him to make sure he wasn't stuffing the damn ballot box. Oh, God, these people are disgusting. And, and, and you know, everything you hear now is Trump, Trump, Trump. This, this, this nickel-sick bastard that they let escape down there in Mexico, the cartoon creep, El Chapo. Or whatever the hell it is. It does sound like a cartoon, doesn't it? Yeah. It's making <clears throat> death threats against Trump. And where was old bastard when that happened? I don't care if he, you know, doesn't care for Trump. He's an American citizen, and that's what connects them. And if I were president, I would have called up that president down there and said, look, you better get that bastard in check, because I'm telling you, he's been making death threats against one of my countrymen. And if he touches a hair, as much as a hair on Trump's head, I'm going to declare war on your country. And I dragged all of my soldiers or whatever from Iraq and Iran, and I would send them there to blow that bastard off the map. And when I get through with it, it will only be fit for two things, the grazing of cows and horses. So you better find that little bastard. And you better lock him up again. And this time you better keep him under lock and key. And you better pray that Trump doesn't even catch a cold. Because if he does, kiss your ass and your country goodbye. How dare you threaten an American citizen, whether it be Trump or anybody in this country. And then what a shitbag he is down there, a drug lord. Who in the hell is he to be making death threats against anybody? Because he is a walking death threat, peddling that crap and putting it in the veins of little kids and teenagers. So you already are a murderer and you've killed a lot of American people, you bastard. So how dare you threaten anybody up here, you sick bag of crap. We need a leader who will not tolerate stuff like that from anybody. Not in this country. This is supposed to be the United States of America. Damn it, you've been elected the president, you fight for it. I tell you, this gets more depressing and more disgusting every day, folks. Every day. And something's got to be done and quick. So think about that. And we'll see you right back here on the Phil Taylor Jones Show next time. And say happy. Bye-bye.